Hello everyone. Welcome to our educational channel, The Great Metabolites. Today, we will be discussing the origin of the discipline, biochemistry. Biochemistry basically is the chemistry of life. It is one of the most incredible and fascinating fields of study in life sciences. Biochemists and biochemistry students are curious to understand the molecular mechanisms that are underlying biological observations and how these processes contribute to health and diseases. The history of biochemistry can be traced as far back as the 17th century, when in 1665, Robert Hooke invented the compound microscope. With a compound microscope, he was able to view specimens and he saw hollow boxes in the specimens, which he named cells. This were later on discovered to be dead cells. In 1674, Anton von Leeuwenhoff, who is also deemed to be the father of microbiology, was the first scientist to be able to view living cells under the microscope. He went ahead to invent the very first practical microscope and he was able to view bacterial cells under the microscope. The discovery of cells by Anton in 1674 was the foundation on which modern day microbiology, biology and biochemistry were eventually established. In 1775, Antoine Lavoisier who is widely regarded as the father of modern day chemistry, was able to identify fundamental elements that constitute the backbone of present day organic chemistry. That's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. He was also able to discover sulfur and he discovered oxygen's role in combustion and respiration. He was able also to produce water using hydrogen and oxygen in a bell jar experiment. With the discovery of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur by Antoine Lavoisier, more scientists were intrigued, and in 1828, Frederick Woodra carried out several reactions, and in his experiments, he ended up synthesizing urea, which is an organic component in urine. This was basically the beginning of organic chemistry as we know it today. This discovery disproved the vitalism theory which had initially suggested that organic molecules such as urea cannot be synthesized solely from inorganic sources. However, Frederick was able to do it using lead cyanide in one of his several experiments. The 17th century discovery of the cell by Anton and Robert Hooke laid the foundation for more studies and it was in the 19th century, precisely around 1836, 
when Theodor Schwann proposed the cell theory which basically identified the cell as the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living organisms. In his famous quote, he said, the cause of nutrition and growth resides not in the organism as a whole, but in the separate elementary part, which is the cell. In line with the prevailing vitalism theory in the 19th century, in 1856, Louis Pasteur was able to use yeast cells to convert sugar to alcohol. This fermentation reaction to him was dependent on vital forces that were contained within the yeast in line with the vitalism theory. He called these forces ferment. The ferments were later on identified to be the enzymes that will convert sugar via glycolysis into pyruvate and eventually alcohol fermentation as we know it today. In 1869, Friedrich Mischer was the first to identify DNA as a distinct molecule. He isolated the nuclein from the cell together with its associated proteins and all other cell nuclei materia. Still in the 19th century, around 1879, Wilhelm Kony coined the term enzyme, which comes from the Greek word in leaven. The word enzyme was used later to describe non-living substances such as pepsin, trypsin, and also the famous ferment that Louis Pasteur had identified as the vital force for the conversion of sugar to alcohol. This was eventually realized to be enzymes that were found within the living organism uh, in which case yeast was the organism containing those enzymes. Still in the 19th century, around 1897, Edward Buchner disproved the vitalism theory and he was able to demonstrate that fermentation of sugar resulted from the action of different enzymes which he called zymases and these were all contained in the yeast cell. This was actually the starting point for the birth of biochemistry as we know it today. In the 20th century in 1904, Carl Neuber officially coined the term biochemistry. Hence, Carl Neuber is often referred to as the father of modern day biochemistry. His notable contribution to science includes the elucidation of alcohol fermentation and also the isolation of the enzyme carboxylase. Still in the 20th century, around 1919, Febos Levine discovered the order of the three major components of a single nucleotide. That's the phosphate, the pentose sugars, and the nitrogenous bases. The nucleotides, as we know, are 
the basic components for deoxy ribonucleic acids and ribonucleic acids. Still in the 20th century, around 1920, James Sumner showed that the enzyme urease was a pure protein and he was able to crystallize it and he also did same crystallization of the enzyme catalyst. This experiments proved that the enzymes were proteins. Furthermore, in the 1930s, the enzymes pepsin, trypsin, chymotrypsin were also purified and all of these experiments and research work and the three scientists an award of the Nobel Prize in Biochemistry in 1946. In 1937, Hans Krebs discovered the citric acid cycle, which is also known as the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. This milestone discovery earned him a Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine in 1954. In 1944, Oswald Avery suggested that the genetic material of the cell was possibly the DNA. This was a milestone experiment which showed that DNA is the genetic principle in the cells. In 1950, Ewing Shagaf postulated Shagaf's rule, which basically stated that the total number of pyrimidines, that's the thymines and the cytosines, approximates the number of purines, that's adenine and guanine, in the nucleic acids. In 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick were able to derive the three-dimensional structure and a double helical model of the DNA. This DNA double helical structure revolutionized our understanding of molecular biology as we know it today. In 1955, Frederick Sanger studied the amino acid sequence and was able to complete the structural elucidation of the amino acid sequence in the protein insulin. This was a milestone experiment and achievement that also earned Frederick Sanger his first Nobel Prize in Chemistry Award in 1958. In 1956, Francis Crick coined the term the central dogma in molecular biology which basically highlights the conversion from DNA to RNA to proteins and the self replication of DNA, the transcription of DNA into RNA and the translation of RNA into proteins. In 1977, 
Frederick Sanger successfully sequenced the genome of bacteriophage which contain approximately 5,000 nucleotides using chain termination technique. This milestone experiment also and Frederick Sanger his second Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1980 together with Paul Berg and Walter Gibbet. This achievement is what is known in present day as the Sanger's method of DNA sequencing or the chain termination method. In 1983, Carrie Mullis invented polymerase chain reaction, famously known as PCR. This milestone achievement also earned Carrie a Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1993 at age 48 years old. As you will recall, PCR has become a very vital diagnostic tool and in recent times with COVID-19, PCR was one of the gold standard tests for diagnosing COVID-19. From the 17th century to the 19th century, there were exciting discoveries in the field of sciences that laid the foundation for the establishment of biochemistry as an exciting field of study. In the 20th century, there were lots of Nobel Prizes that were won by distinguished scientists in the field of biochemistry. In the 21st century, the field of biochemistry has continued to grow in leaps and bounds. Development of new technologies has paved the way for new discoveries in the field of biochemistry, and this has helped biochemistry to contribute significantly in information in the fields of biology, medicine, nutrition, agriculture, genetics, immunology, physiology, just to name a few. In our subsequent videos, we will be highlighting all the discoveries of biochemistry in the 21st century. Thank you all for watching. See you in the next video.